Hey everybody, it's Travis speaking. Uh, today what I would like to show you with Revit Architecture is how you would go about creating a spiral staircase. Now things are a little bit different in 2013. It's a little more intuitive, a little bit easier to do, but uh, some of us are still using the 2012 version, so I figured it'd be good if we go over how you create that staircase here in Revit 2012. So to start, I've got just a simple building here, and we're in a 3D view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a stair going from this first floor to the second floor. And if I change this over to wireframe, you can see that we've got our second floor right here. So I'm going to come back into this first floor plan and I'm going to come up to the circulation tab. You can see you've got railings, ramps, and stairs. And I'm going to choose stair. Now you'll notice that you have two options. You've got a line and you've got an arc to create the run for your stair. So perhaps what we should have done first is create a little sketch just to show where we're going to create this stair. So I'll exit out of here for now and I'll come over to the model lines. These are just two dimensional uh, objects that you can use to give you an idea as to where you're going to put your parametric object afterwards. So I'll come up to this circle feature and I'm going to draw a circle in here. Uh, six foot six, that works for me. Uh, it's going to be a little bit wider staircase, so let's not worry about it too much. We can always adjust this afterwards as well. So now that my circle sketch is in place, I know that I'm going to be using this as my spiral. I'm going to come back over to the home tab and go back to stairs and I'm going to choose this arc feature. So once I have the arc feature selected, I right click on the mouse and in the snaps override, I want to choose centers. So now that I come over here, I can highlight this line and you'll see that it's starting my run along the curvature of the circle. So let's just start right here on the node and you'll notice as I follow the curve of the circle, it's creating the risers. So I've got two, one, zero remaining and now that I've uh, left clicked again at the end you can see that I've got a full stair sketch for this spiral staircase and it's saying 16 risers created, zero remaining. So that works for me for now. Let's take a look at how this looks. I'll hit the green check mark. I'll let it do its thing and think and you'll notice you've got a nice cut line because we're looking at the first floor. <clears throat> if I go over to my second floor plan we're going to see something a little bit strange, but that's because we didn't modify this floor to suit the stair. So we'll just place the mouse over this wall and we'll hit the tab key until we see our floor is selected. Then I'll left click the mouse and select the floor. Now what I want to do is edit the boundary. So I need to essentially create an opening in this stair so that we've got enough headroom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the pick lines option and I'm just going to use the stringer as a way of defining where the opening is going to be in the floor. So I know I'm going to want it at this first down step, but where do I put it in here? Uh, we could be able to probably just use this one. In an actual design review, you might want to take this a little bit further and look at it in a section or an elevation to see where the headroom is but uh, we'll do that in a second. So now that I've got the basic outlines that I need for this opening, I'm just going to come up to my trim extend command and I'm going to connect these lines to this one here and I should have a pretty decent opening for this stair. So I'll use my green check mark. Oh, and it's telling me that these aren't closed. So let's come back and close these ones up. if it lets me. Sometimes you might want to do this just with a, a manual grip instead. That seemed to work. Now it's saying the floor roof overlaps the highlighted walls. Would you like to join geometry and cut overlapping volume out of the walls? No, I don't want any geometry removed so I'm just going to choose no. And now you can see that I've got my staircase. It's coming up into the second floor where I created that opening. If I wanted, I could have opened that up a little bit further and have a nice circular opening to below, but we don't really need that for the time being. If I go down into the first floor, I no longer need this sketch. I can remove that. 
And let's just take a quick look at how this is going to look in 3D. So I'll, I'll place a camera and we'll point it at this staircase. And we'll just open that up just a little bit so we can see how our spiral stair looks. And we've got a pretty small amount of headroom there. So I guess what we could do is we could come back to the second floor plan and just modify this part of the floor till it's all the way open. So we could just remove that piece and you'll notice that our lines have extended. I'll come back up to the pick lines option and maybe we could just do it do it to here the second step. I'll come back finish fixing up these lines. I'll choose no again and we'll come back down to the project browser and take a quick look at our 3D view and to me that looks like we might have some headroom. We'll just take a quick look at a different shade mode and there you have it a pretty simple spiral staircase in just a few minutes. Now one of the nice things about 2013 as I was mentioning earlier is you can do that same operation much quicker. If I come over to the first floor of this version and I come to the architecture the circulation panel and I choose the stair it's going to open up some new options for me and you can see that I've got a full step spiral and I've also got a center end spiral this is what we did earlier was a center end so we'll just come down here and we'll start building that stair we can make it similar to what we had before with six foot six and I'm just going to run that until we need no more risers and I'll click my green check mark and give it a second to generate that stair and then again now we'd still have to trim the floor out but let's just take a quick look in our first floor we'll create a, another camera view We'll just take a quick look at this one and see what we got. So again, I'm a little bit closer to this one, but as you can see, it's pretty much done the exact same thing as what we did last time, minus the opening. And if we change our shade mode, you can see you have pretty much the exact same feature, only with less few less fewer mouse clicks. So. Anyway, that's some spiral stairs for you in Revit 2012 and 2013. Hope that answers your question about spiral stairs and you get to using Revit a little bit more often. Thanks for watching. Bye now.